Welcome to part 3 of my series on how elements react with a magnet. I have a few but fantastic samples that I can't wait to show you, so let's start. First up is calcium, a quite common metal. An average adult has around 1 kilogram of calcium in the bones, 10 times more than in this bottle. Calcium is attracted to a magnet, so it is paramagnetic. It is also quite a good electrical conductor, around 3 times better than iron, so when I move the magnet too fast, eddy currents are generated in the calcium. These eddy currents repel the metal away from the magnet when the magnet is coming fast towards the metal. But they attract the metal towards the magnet when the magnet is moving fast away from the metal. The paramagnetism attracts the metal when the magnet is steady or moving very slowly. Calcium attracts a magnet about as much as tellurium repels one. Vanadium is an important element used in for example the durable chrome vanadium steel for tools. This nice sample is crystal stored on the argon. It is just paramagnetic enough to wiggle near a magnet. And lift the magnet a little on a scale. Notice the minus reading. On the highly sensitive water bath, it is very clearly attracted to the magnet. Vanadium attracts a magnet about as much as bismuth repels one. Phosphorus is a very reactive element. Mixed with glass powder and glue, it is found on the side of matchboxes, so you are only one flick away from releasing the destructive force of fire. Phosphorus should repel a magnet, but this sample attracts. This is a good example of why high purity is important when testing elemental properties. This sample is minimum 98% pure, but 1% impurity of iron compounds is more than enough to counteract the weak diamagnetism of phosphorus. I doubt I will ever test a better phosphorus sample though, it still was a good one. Arsenic is an infamous toxic metalloid, so this 107 gram sample made my heart beat a little faster. Stay away from this shit. For safety reasons, this is a vacuum pack inside a vacuum pack, making it a little hard to film the arsenic. But it looks innocent, just like scrap metal. A magnet reveals that this isn't rusty iron. I could not see a reaction. Arsenic is a very weak diamagnetic metalloid. Almost neutral. The next sample may be the most dangerous I will ever show. Take a close look at these warnings. It is a small sample of fatal thallium. This sample is corroded, but you can see the shiny metal at the edges where the metal has scraped against the glass. Thallium is a very soft metal that can be cut with a knife. With such a small sample in a heavy wrapping, I just couldn't get a reaction even though thallium is more diamagnetic than vanadium is paramagnetic. A bigger naked sample should easily show the diamagnetism on a water bath. But I'm not looking for such a sample, neither should you. Having survived these nasty ones, let's finish off with a couple of new and beautiful samples from my own collection. This is the awesome Osmium. A tiny sample, but it still weighs over 2 grams, so it has a cute friction noise against the glass. With such a small and dense sample, I need to ramp up my test to show that it is paramagnetic. The trick is to use a sphere magnet. Its shape gives it a tiny but powerful magnetic field on the poles. To find one of the poles on the magnet, I use another one. They will automatically line up pole to pole. With one pole here, the other pole is right there. The second magnet is also a practical handle. 
Let's test if this will show osmium's paramagnetism. Look for an attraction. It's so weak, but I'm happy to see it works. Also notice the beautiful blue tinge of osmium. Since I started this video series back in early 2012, one element has been requested the most. I hear you. I have saved up for some gold. At 5 grams, it's not a large sample, but it's all I could afford. Taking it out of the original seal could make it difficult to sell it again, so I'm not gonna open it. Nah, just kidding. In the name of science, I shall set you free. With the candy out of the wrapping, you get the full experience. Gold is a stunning element. Alright, it is finally time to test if gold really is diamagnetic. Yes, it repels a magnet. Gold is an excellent electrical conductor, so fast movement of the magnet generates eddy currents in the gold. But a steady magnet shows the repelling force of diamagnetism. Let's just for the fun of it imagine that someone claimed this watch bracelet to be solid 24 karat gold. It is obviously not. 24 karat gold is too soft to be used in jewelry and watches. But play along. He would say, look, it's the right color and it's not magnetic. True that, but does it repel a magnet in a sensitive setup? Nope. This is clearly not solid 24 karat gold. It is actually stainless steel electroplated with 18 karat gold. Just an extremely thin layer, so practically worthless. Much better fake gold bars with a tungsten core have been made, so never trust a magnet alone. On the scale I could barely detect the diamagnetism. The gold is not touching the magnet, it is just repelling the magnet to give a plus reading. This would be easier to detect with a scale that could measure milligrams. Also notice the larger minus reading when I quickly move the gold away. This is of course the magnetic field of the eddy currents being generated in the gold. Now I couldn't resist gathering these three elements for a family photo. 1 kilogram of copper, 10 grams of cesium and 5 grams of gold. Can you guess what alloy this is? I'll give a little shout out in one of my next videos to the one who first write a comment with the right answer. I have shown you exactly 60 elements now. Can I get you to press like to celebrate this anniversary? Anyway, thanks for watching this far. Hope you enjoyed it.